guys, welcome to another episode of the Dr. Edie Show. So this episode is going to be about high blood pressure. Um, we all have heard of high blood pressure. We also may have heard it referenced as hypertension. Um, it's also known in the medical community as the silent killer. And the reason why I wanted to put this video together was just to educate um, you all on the importance of screening for blood pressure. Um, if you have a history of high blood pressure or if you have a history of hypertension, the importance of checking your blood pressure on a daily basis and also the importance of compliance, which means taking your medication as instructed by your physician. Now, some of you may know just from watching my previous videos that I am a family medicine physician here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so with that, I tend to see patients with hypertension on a daily basis. And oftentimes, by the time my patients come to me for other things and I'm checking their blood pressure, looking over their vitals, I realize that their blood pressure is sometimes very high, like sky high. I'm talking about like 180s over 110s, and yet they are not even complaining of any symptoms. And it's that, the high blood pressures um, that puts patients at a risk for stroke heart attack, uh, kidney failure um, over time. And, and oftentimes these things are preventable with proper management and making sure that you're a proper follow-up with your physician. So I felt like this topic was super important, um, especially, especially amongst African-Americans. And then also um, just some people in general who, who are diagnosed and currently uh, managing their blood pressure with medication that their doctor gave them. So I wanted to first just uh, preface that topic, but then also educate you on what blood pressure is and why it's important. So um, we all seen when we go to the doctor's office, they put the cuff on our arm, they press the button, or sometimes they use the stethoscope and a sphygmometer, and they uh, our blood pressure is taken and we're given a number. We're given two numbers, um, a systolic and a diastolic. The systolic number is a top number, and that's the amount of pressure that is exert, exerted on your um, arterial walls when your heart beats. That's a systolic, that's your top number. And then you have the diastolic, that's the bottom number. And that's the number, that is the pressure that the blood puts in your arteries, the walls of your arteries, um, when your heart is relaxed or in between beats. And, um, when you're looking for what's considered normal, what's not normal, well, ideally, normal, what normal is 120 over 80. That's normal. Anything 120 over 80 below is normal. Um, however, there are guidelines that were put out. It's called the JNCA guidelines that are put out. Um, and they're updated often, like over the years, they're updated by a committee. And these guidelines that I'm going to share with you um, are what physicians use to determine which patients decide need to be treated and which patients can be managed with dietary and lifestyle modifications, um, meaning changing your diet in terms of watching the amount of sodium you, you consume and um, lifestyle, meaning exercise regimens. Um, so, so again, normal blood pressure, consider 120 over 80. Um, elevated blood pressure is when your systolic, which is that top number, ranges between 120 to 129, and your diastolic is between 80 to um, 89. And I always sometimes have to reference, um, correction, because that's the reason why I have reference, reference. <laughs> so your systolic elevated is 120 to 129, and your diastolic is less than 80. Now, when you start to enter your hypertensive stages, there's stage one or stage two. Stage one hypertension is when your uh, systolic ranges between 130 to 139, and your diastolic, which is the bottom number, is between 80 to 89. Um, and then that's stage one hypertension. And in that stage, um, we always say, you know, like if, if you have no other risk factors, you're just uh, high blood pressure between 130s, 139, and then your diastolic is 80 to 89, we just say, okay, lifestyle modification and sodium-restricted diet. 
Now, the moment your blood pressure hits above 140, your systolic is above 140, so 140 or above, um, and your diastolic is above 90, then you have stage two hypertension. That's when we usually initiate uh, pharmacological uh, therapy for you. And so um, when it comes to age, now age does play a role on your blood pressure numbers as well in terms of like who's gonna get treated, um, who's not gonna get treated. And usually that age is at 60. So if you're 60 and above, and your blood pressure is above 150 over 90, you're gonna be treated. If you're um, 60 and your blood pressure is 140 or 80, you, and you have no other risk factors, then you don't need to be treated unless you have other risk factors such as like diabetes, um, hyperlipidemia, other risk factors that increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. So again, 60 and above, with no other risk factors. Um, treatment is not usually initiated until your blood pressure is reached on 150 over 90. And then anything below that, um, over, under the age of 60, will be treated um, with medications or lifestyle and diet restrictions. So um, it's very important, again, I can't stress it enough, that you do when you're grocery shopping or you're cooking meals um, that you don't add salt to your food when you're cooking or that when you're shopping you're actually looking at the labels and looking at the sodium content in the labels so when we say sodium restricted diet um, that's less than two grams per day and if you look at the just say a can of beans for example um, if you look at the label and it says 780 milligrams of sodium and then you look at the number of servings and it says two servings in a can then you got to take that 780 times two that's the amount of sodium is in that one can if you're eating a, this whole can of beans so although you may be eating beans which are healthy because they're rich in fiber if you're getting canned beans you have to you have to make sure you're looking at the sodium labels the best um the best way to consume beans is buying them dry and then boiling them and cooking them yourself and then that way you know you're not adding additional salt to them um, you can add other seasonings like garlic powder onion powder things like that just to flavor them but you know you want to stay away or shy away from adding salt to your food because a lot of the foods that we end up consuming already have sodium in it already so we don't want to keep adding to it um other things that I wanted to, to mention as well is like when you're when you are at the grocery store, you know you have the outer aisles and you have the the middle aisle. Now, do your best to, to stay away from the middle aisles of the grocery store. That's where all your processed food is. Um, these are foods that are shelf foods. Um, they're usually packed with sodium, which extends the shelf life, um, and you you know and obviously can increase your high, your um, your blood pressure. So you want to follow you want to follow the outer aisles. Um, these are aisles that has the produce, your fish, uh, your poultry, things like that, and then also your dairy sections. Um, so that's just a quick little reference if you're um, wanting to find out, like you know, when you go to the grocery store, where you should be kind of spending most of your time when you're shopping. So it's just kind of stick to the outer aisles. It's okay every now and then if you got to get something in the middle. But just try to try your best to, to stick with the outer aisles. And if you do have to go get groceries in, a, in the middle of the aisles, again, pay attention to the sodium content on the labels. Start reading these labels, guys. It's so important. Um, if you're if you're into these frozen foods like pizzas and pastas, things that are frozen and, and microwavable, again, look at those labels and see how much sodium you're actually consuming because you want to stay below two grams a day. Um, that's, you know, I, less is better, but two grams a day or less, um, is kind of like your goal. So now what are some symptoms that should be concerning when you're thinking about blood pressure? Um, obviously headaches, um, changes in your vision, uh, facial droop, slur speech, uh, things you start when you when you have some of these symptoms you start to think about an impending stroke or a stroke so stroke symptoms like I just mentioned 
is we call it the fast, which is your facial droopiness. Um, you will have um, um, asymmetry in your face. You also have slurred of your, slurring of your speech. And you want to call 911 if that happens. And or if you have um, frequent waking up in the morning with headaches, neck tension, um, you start noticing that your digits are swollen, like your hands, your feet are swollen, you're kind of puffy. Um, there, there's a sign that you may have high blood pressure. So I would highly recommend that you buy an arm, uh, arm cuff, a blood pressure cuff, and start monitoring your blood pressure. And again, looking for those numbers that we mentioned. I'll, re I'll repeat it again. 120 over 80 is normal. When your blood pressure is elevated, you're looking at the range is 120 to 129 of systolic, your diastolic around 80 or less. Um, when you're looking for a hypertension stage one, the blood pressure is between 130 to 139 and 80 to 89 for your diastolic. Anything above that is considered um, stage two hypertension, which requires treatment, of course. Um, what causes hypertension in the first place? So genetics plays a role. So if you have your mom or dad who um, you know, has hypertension, it increases your chance of getting hypertension. Um, sedentary lifestyle, uh, poor dieting, no, um, no, uh, not exercising. Those things are, are also some risk factors. Smoking is a risk factor because smoking, when we smoke, when you smoke cigarettes, it causes vasoconstriction of the, of the vessels and that can increase your blood pressure as well. Other things are, um, alcohol use can also cause hypertension. Um, what else? Um, certain kidney illnesses or even stress in some way stress can induce high, uh, your blood pressure to, to go up as well so there's a lot of things that can contribute to uh, hypertension but the most common is genetics um, and then also just our our body habitus and our um, our diet um, one other thing that I wanted to mention regarding blood pressure is um, hypertensive urgency now, hypertensive urgency is when your systolic, which is a top number, reaches about 180, and your diastolic, which is the bottom number, is around 120. That's hypertensive urgency. You want to make sure when that happens, your kidneys are at risk for damage because you have all this pressure shooting through your kidneys. You also, your vessels are at risk for damage because, again, you have all this pressure shooting through those arteries. Um, so a lot of times... People don't know that they are um, that their blood pressure is elevated to that level. They may have some symptoms of dizziness and headache, but then again, that that gets easily dismissed as, oh, it's nothing serious. It's just a little headache here. I'll take some Tylenol, or a little dizziness. Oh, maybe I'll just maybe I'm just dehydrated. I got to drink more water. But it's it's really your blood pressure. Um, so just checking your blood pressure. You want to make sure that if your blood pressure is that high, you seek medical attention um, immediately. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention in terms of risk factors for hypertension is age. So as we age, our vessels start to get a little stiffer. Um, that also increases the risk of hypertension as well. So um, making sure I'm not missing anything. A um, couple tips that I recommend is when you do decide to purchase a blood pressure monitor, is that you keep a log of your blood pressure. So that means first thing in the morning, just take your blood pressure, jot it down, the time of day, the date, things like that. Just jot it down so you can have a log, start the log. And then in the evening, just around 6 p.m. for example, um, you can take your blood pressure again. If you start to notice that it's elevated, then you wanna reach out to your physician and let them know. This is assuming that you were never diagnosed with hypertension. Um, if you're diagnosed with hypertension and again, you check your blood pressure and you're keeping a log and you're recording the numbers and you're seeing that your numbers are elevated consistently and you're already on medication, chances are that either A, your doctor will increase the current medication that you're on or B, they're going to add 
to the current medication that you're on, a lot of times people end up taking two to three um, antihypertensive medications um, to get their blood pressure under control. And this is in conjunction with lifestyle modifications, diet, exercise, um, things of that sort. So um, I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions regarding blood pressure, please drop it in the comment section below. If you like the videos that you're seeing, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be updated when new videos are posted. Um, until then, have a great day, and I hope you guys um, stay safe out there. Bye.